all afraid of something, right? For some of us, it might be spiders. For others, it's clowns. Maybe for you, it's crosstalk and parasitics. Or maybe, like me, it's graphics. I know, I know, breathe deep, click your heels, and we'll be back in Kansas in no time. (laughs) Yes, my friends, today we are talking about graphics, but don't go just yet. I promise you won't have to run off to your happy place anytime soon. Like me, you're probably going to have to design a GUI someday. And frankly, getting all those pixels in a line does not exactly sound like fun. <clears throat> Absolutely not. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Jog Talk. My guest today is Brendan Slade from NXP, and we're going to talk about making GUIs easy. Funny thing, you don't actually need to know the ins and outs of fancy graphics. Phew. (laughs) And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information on how NXP is making GUIs easy. Hi, Brendan. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a real pleasure to meet you and be here today. So my embedded designs have historically had buttons and knobs and dials and my marketing department hates it. (laughs) And now they say, I have to get it connected. So how the heck am I going to get my designs up to date here, Brendan? You know, I moved to California about 16, 17 years ago, and I know exactly what you mean. I hate my irrigation controller. You know, all those buttons and dials. Well, the good news is we have all the tools and the MCUs that are really going to help solve that problem for you. Excellent. So, Brendan, my designs are kind of looking like the graphic on the left, but I and my marketing department really want something more along the lines of the right side. Yeah, and, you know, that's something we see from a lot of different customers. Our customers are coming to us and saying their marketing departments hate their current designs. They've all got smartphones. Their customers have got smartphones. They need a much higher standard for human interface designs now. Everything's turning smart, and how on earth do you do an IoT-connected device with buttons and knobs and dials? Right. And also TFT displays are appearing everywhere, places where they've never been before, on the washing machines, thermostats, ovens, and so on. So my fear is that to get this kind of interface is that I'm going to have to boot Linux, have a bigger power supply, and that seems like a lot in terms of what kind of design I'm doing. Right. So people look at these kind of designs with graphics and animation and they think, I'm going to need some high-end microprocessor to do this. I'm going to need a big budget and lots of time and lots of experience with GUI and graphic development. Right. But the answer is you don't. No. The answer is as simple as microcontroller units. All right. You say it's easy, but what can I really do here with just a microcontroller? Right. A very good question. So this slide here shows the kind of UIs that you can achieve with a microcontroller. There's a whole range. It starts from devices like fitness devices, which can have very small displays, 1.8 inch. And the MCU frequency to handle that can be very low. If you're only showing some simple text or basic graphics with little or no animation, that's perfectly good enough. What we see in the applications here are a range of different end products, from medical devices to weighing machines thermostats and washing machines and typically the size of the display there is going to be in the wide QVGA range and the MCU performance you need to handle that is typically in the 100 to 200 megahertz range. Okay so that's pretty impressive but I'm guessing that not just any microcontroller can do that. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say my little Cortex M0 can handle this. Well the answer is it really depends. So if you have a very simple display, a very simple application, then an M0 might handle it. But typically, as you get into that kind of mid to higher range performance, you do need some other features. So you need to make a decision whether your LCD controller is internal to the MCU or external. Okay. Do I need a graphics LCD controller built into my device? Whether I need a spy flash interface? And also you need to consider power. Do I care that much about power? If I'm plugged into the wall, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Sure. Okay, so let's talk about this internal versus external LCD controller. 
Yeah, right. So you asked me about lower end performance devices. The one in the diagram here is is in a Cortex M4, but it could be a Cortex M0. And there's a lot of low cost LCD panels out there that have internal LCD controllers and some frame buffer. So you can talk to them over spy bus. As you get into the mid to high end range, you're going to need to look at getting the LCD controller on the MCU and you're going to need more memory. So that means external SRAM or SDRAM. And to store a lot of graphics primitives, if you have a lot of different images to display a lot of animation, you need a cost effective way of storing that. And that's where the quad spy flash comes in. OK, so uh, tell me more about this LCD graphics controller. Yeah, so the LCD graphics controller needs to be something that's flexible. There's a lot of different LCDs out there, so you need to make sure it's one that can handle the resolution you need, but has the flexibility to adapt. LCD panels are typically made in pretty high volume and they can come and go over time. So you want some flexibility there too. You need to be able to handle the color depth that you need. 24 bits is what we can offer. And that's typically more than enough for these kind of applications. Having an onboard DMA controller can really help with system efficiency too. And that's something we offer. And finally, hardware cursor. This is so when you want to draw a cursor on the screen, you're not having to do lots of work to redraw it on top of your frame image. Just something that's overlaid automatically by the LCD controller itself. Okay, so earlier you mentioned spiffy. Now I think everyone wants their designs to be spiffy. I certainly do. But uh, what is this spy flash interface all about? Yes, I like to think spiffy is an English term, you know, where I come from. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so spiffy is a very cool idea. It's the concept of using serial flash instead of parallel flash to very efficiently store a large amount of data. Okay. This means it's very small. So you can have one, two, three, four, even actually up to eight in some new devices of serial channels to this spy flash. And it still gives you very high performance. Because the spy interface runs fast, you can still get up to about 70% of the performance of an internal flash memory that you typically find in an MCU. Nice. And with those serial interfaces, of course, it's very small. And it's ideal for storing the image data that you find in this kind of application. And from a programming perspective, it's very simple. It just appears like memory, any other memory that you'd have in the system. Okay. So... Brendan, some devices need hardware acceleration and some need more than others. But I'm always worried about that power budget that's always hovering over my head. Right. And this is another real benefit of microcontrollers. And I'm glad you mentioned hardware acceleration because there are devices out there that have this. And certainly in some applications, you may need that. But in the ones we're looking at, you really don't. If you have DMA support, and you have a high enough performance CPU and with that LCD controller, that's more than enough for almost every application in the kind of space we're talking about. The ARM Cortex M4 core is more than capable of implementing most of these kind of applications, and it does it very optimally. The LPC 54600 family provides performance of 180 megahertz, and it does it with 100 microamps per megahertz power consumption. So it's extremely power efficient. And so combining those things, you've got a solution which covers the application more than adequately. And it also has all the connectivity and performance left over to handle the other system functions. So you don't have to have an MCU that's just dedicated only for the GUI. It can do the rest of the application as well. Cool. Okay, so way back on that title slide, you promised me this was going to be easy. So uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, in minutes. Right, how do I justify that? So let's talk about WYSIWYG. So not a character from Harry Potter. WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. Okay. So the modern tools we're going to be seeing in a moment are tools that give you that. What it means is when you're designing, you're seeing what the end application is going to look like as you develop. You're not trying to say, oh, I drew this little thing on my screen. Go back. Does that look right? Oh, I can't really tell. Which is where the fear comes from. People think they have to do that kind of thing as they develop. And right. that's really not the case anymore. So all the tools we're going to show here are all capable of importing graphics that you already have. They can also handle fonts and different languages and so on. And they can all support simulation of your GUI on your Microsoft Windows platform. Nice. So when you want to grab that guy from the marketing team who's been badgering you about this design and he wants to say, well, what's going on? What does it look like? You that can guy. show him that on the PC. You don't cool. have to get it running on the board. Nice. But in addition to that, and this is really where you get to go and play golf on that 
Friday afternoon because he thinks you've done all this work is right. because you can press a few buttons and make it run on the board. And nice. so if they want to go and validate their requirements with customers or with upper management, you can enable them to do that very easily. You can either choose tools which will generate API in a library or will generate C code directly. And there's good news, free stuff. Love right? free stuff, yes. Free stuff's great. So you can evaluate several different options for free and not have to go and get your uh, manager to sign off a big budget and a tool which then doesn't quite work out for you. Right. <laughs> All right. Can you give me an example of this WYSIWYG business, which is not a Harry Potter beast or something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the first one is MWIN by Sega. So this is pretty cool on the free stuff angle because you can use Sega MWIN for free on any LPC or Kinetis microcontroller from NXP. Nice. Yeah, nice indeed. It also includes a set of utilities. So you can import your own bitmaps and you can convert fonts and so on and build the tool in that WYSIWYG style and then run it easily on our board. The MCU Expresso SDK comes with MWIN built in. So it's very easy to access and it's free. I'll say that again. It's free. You I can go it. and put it in your end application. Object code access is provided without any additional charge. Excellent. So what if I want to do something a bit more fancy in terms of animation? I am not the biggest graphics expert. Actually, I'm pretty terrible at it. <laughs> you got something to help me <laughs> like here. Like most engineers, right. yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, so Touch GFX by Drapner Graphics is a very nice fit for someone in that situation. So again, they offer a tool which enables you to build a GUI very easily and quickly. Now, if you think you know how to do that, but you're not quite sure how to get an HMI design quite right. Yeah. Maybe your marketing guy isn't so sharp either. Right. Or he or she isn't <laughs> so creative as they might think they are. A partner like Droughtner Graphics can offer those kind of design services for you. To give you an example, that irrigation controller was an idea I came up with. It didn't look anything like that when I came up with it. No. It was, <laughs> let's say, a little bit uglier than that. <laughs> and they created that beautiful design there. So that's the kind of services they can provide in, as well as offering a very capable graphics library. Excellent. All right, Brendan, I got this buddy. He lives down the road and he's in the same boat with me, but his company is a stickler about having source code. Yeah, we've all got a buddy like that, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, one who's always trouble, you know, he's <laughs> complaining when you go for a beer. So, yeah, so uh, Embedded Wizard by Tara is a great solution for that because it has similar kind of capabilities to Droughtner's tools, but it generates C code. So for those kind of customers who are very concerned about something being hidden away in a black box library, it right. solves that problem. They get ANSI C out of the tool. Excellent. Brendan, I think I'm ready to get started. Where do I go for more information? Great news. Yep. So it's very easy. You can go to NXP's website and order this board or go to one of our distributors like Mouser, of course, and get your board. And once you have your board, there's free demo evaluations available. So you can go to NXP's site, download the MCU Expresso SDK package, and that has MWIN included. Cool. You can go to Droughtner's site, which is touchgfx.com, and download their free evaluation tool, which also works with the same SDK package. And Embedded Wizard, same story. You can go there and you can download their free evaluation. So it's very, very easy to get started. There's very few restrictions on the use of the TouchGFX and Embedded Wizard tools, so you can really get a full feel for how your development process will go. So the board has everything you need to get started. It has a very nice LCD display with capacitive touch, has micro and SD RAM, quad spy flash, debug probe built in, so you don't need to buy any extra debug probes. It also has lots of other goodies like digital microphone from Knowles, SD cards and all those good things and expansion ports too. So if you need to hook hardware to it to control your own sprinklers or your own thermostat system, you can do that as well. Sounds great. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Brendan. Thanks, Amelia. It's been lots of fun. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about NXP and how they are making GUIs easy. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to EE Journal's On Demand section or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal. <laughs>